Straight ahead on WBKB, President Biden's relief package passes in the House. Plus, we mark the one year anniversary of COVID-19 and a local youth is recognized for her leadership and community service. You're watching Thunder Bay News Network. WBKB News at 6 starts now. This is WBKB News at 6. An in-depth look at news, weather, and sports. From hard-hitting news stories to local events, we're there with coverage you can count on. You're watching WBKB News at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Tyler Cruz. And I'm Sherry Stewart. The House has approved President Biden's trillion dollar relief plan. Without re any Republican support, the House passed Biden's $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan Wednesday afternoon. The bill will go to Biden's desk, who said he will sign it as soon as he gets it. $1,400 stimulus checks are included in the plan and will be delivered this month. $300 a week unemployment boosts will continue through September 6th. And the bill also provides funding for vaccine distribution and COVID testing. Biden is expected to sign the American Rescue Plan on Friday. And today marks one year since the coronavirus was discovered in Michigan. Flags have been lowered to honor victims. This afternoon, Governor Whitmer gave a statement recognizing and remembering all that Michiganders have been through and lost over this past year. And to honor the lost, Whitmer asks residents to turn on porch lights from 8 to 9 p.m. tonight to represent how Michiganders have been lights to each other in dark times. She mentioned that while the virus kept us apart, it also pulled Michiganders together as one community. Communities stepped up, and there were acts of heroic selflessness on every street. Even as a deadly virus was keeping us apart, we pulled together in remarkable ways. To conclude her remarks, the governor played a video honoring the 16,000 plus lives Michigan lost to the virus. To watch the full video, you can find a link on our website. And WBKB remembers the families of those that have lost their lives to COVID during this past year. Mid Michigan Health is helping make history in a new study. The medical centers in Midland and Gratiot are participating in a global COVID-19 study. The Active One study will examine ways to improve the health outcomes of people with COVID-19. The study is testing a class of drugs that will help minimize negative effects of the virus. Doctors say there are several goals to tackle during this study. To fight this disease, you have to tasks, two major tasks. One is to stop the replication of the virus, and the second is to modulate the immune system. Patients who are part of the study are randomly assigned to one of three modulators or a placebo. Each patient that is admitted to the hospital that has COVID, we screen them using um, inclusion and exclusion guidelines. Um, to see if they qualify for the study. So we try and look at every single patient that is admitted with COVID. Mid Michigan Medical Centers in Midland and Gratiot are the only two hospitals in the state to participate in this study. Roger City's Downtown Development Authority met for a meeting this morning. The committee heard presentations from several state organizations who offered ideas to help beautify the city and ways to get the community involved. Also on the table were the DDA's budget for the year, as well as ways to pay for the revitalization of the bathrooms at Lakeside Park Pavilion. DDA member confirmed that they will meet with Michigan Main Street program staff in mid-April. And if you're in the market for a new job, you'll definitely want to pay attention to this next story. Now that's for sure. Whether you realize it or not, your next job interview may be with a robot. The use of artificial intelligence, or AI, is becoming increasingly common in recruitment, especially at Fortune 500 companies. You could be asked to complete video interviews or online tests without knowing that an algorithm is scoring your application. There is so much going on in the background, so many algorithms being run, like monitoring your facial expressions, they call them your micro expressions, that they feel like they can get an idea of what your personality might be with or how you might compare to other members on the team who've also been analyzed. With an estimated 83% of U.S. companies using some form of AI in their hiring process, you definitely need to make sure that your resume stands out from all the others. 
they are looking for those keywords, those exact words, the percentage of times those words are used, there is a website out there and it's free called jobscan.com. And what you can do is you can take the job description that for the job that you're applying for, you upload that, you upload your resume, and it gives you your percent match, whether or not the AI is going to move you forward. And Hasten strongly recommends that if you're in the active job search that you lock down your social media accounts. And we have a link to the full interview with Hasten on our website. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. well, the Boys and Girls Club of Alpena has announced their Youth of the Year Award winner. Allison Hazinski is this year's recipient of the honor. Allison has been with the Boys and Girls Club of Alpena for over two years and volunteered for over 200 hours during her tenure at the club. I'm really honored. I kind of didn't expect it. It's like the biggest thing that's really happened. Allison is a 4.0 student attending Michigan State University with plans on being an entrepreneur. She says if she had any advice for future Allison, it's to stay confident. Just be confident in yourself. I've always been super shy, and just being confident in myself has been a lot of help. And keep that confidence. And a congratulations to Allison, and good luck as she contends for Michigan's Youth of the Year title and a $2,500 scholarship. Very nice. Well, one Michigan department is hosting a virtual event to highlight key industry trends. The event hosted by the Michigan Office of Outdoor Recreation Industry will educate suppliers on outdoor recreation, product sales, and trends. Attendees may participate in an educational webinar, networking opportunities, and one-on-one -on -one buyer supplier meetings. The event takes place on Tuesday, March 23rd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We'll have registration information on our website. There's more news ahead for you here on WBKB. Coming up, Next Level heads over to City Hall to speak with Mayor Wallagora. Stay tuned. Early morning lows near 50 degrees and afternoon highs tomorrow getting up to 60. It is going to get significantly colder for the end of the week. I'll have more on that coming up later in the newscast. Thanks for that, Ellie. Well, on today's Next Level, WBKB's Stephanie Minichi heads over to City Hall where she speaks with Mayor Matt Wallagora. The mayor shares interesting things about his job that you may not know. Mayor Wallagora grew up in Long Rapids, went to Alpena schools, and was even in the service. What you may not know is that becoming a mayor was not even on his radar. Mayor Wallagora, thank you for joining me today. I think our viewers might find it interesting to know what was on your radar as a kid. You know, I had aspirations of being a helicopter pilot or an underwater welder for quite some time, but I had issues with either one of those careers, uh, one, one part or another, so I ended up just going in the service until I came out and decided what I would do after that. And then you one day become an adult, life happens, and what did that look like for you? Yeah, I, um, I actually uh, held what I would call jobs for quite a while. Uh, always had a job, really didn't set on a career until I was in my early 30s. I went back to ACC and started an engineering uh, program there. Uh, ended up stopping after two years with associate and I, ha I got a great job um, at panel processing and, I, st and I, I stayed there for 16 years. Never finished my bachelor's, um, but was really happy there. And uh, just recently I left there and um, bought a small business. So, um, Darcy, for sending us this photo, if you have a photo such as nature shots, pics with friends or interesting sites you see that you would like to send us, email it along with a short description to news at WBKB11.com. That might be one of the coolest birdhouses I've ever seen. It's got Pretty the window, nice. the little doors and everything. <laughs> Sports is coming up next. But first, Jake Vanderbrook is here with a preview. Jake, what's going on tonight? Tyler, huge news out of the NHL regarding what the future will look like for their games to be broadcasted on. I'll have more details on that. Plus, a little rivalry in Hillman for girls basketball. We got your Battle of the Tigers preview. Stick around, ladies. And welcome back. Before we head off tonight, we wanted to bring you some footage of how this community has managed to celebrate important milestones during the year of COVID-19. <laughs>
Th our facility was built by the community for the community. And really today the parade really, um, that really displayed how everybody really comes together and really, um, you know, we support each other and help each other. That's all we have for you this evening. You can read more about our broadcast stories and get the scoop on other news items online. Just visit WBKB11.com for sports, weather, and news updates anytime, day or night. And check us out on our Facebook page and Twitter handle at WBKB11. Be sure to catch us back here tonight at 11 with Stephanie Manishi. Have a great evening.